Skin Life is a booming, multi-million pound industry. The use of products which promise to make dark skin lighter is an ever-increasing trend among ethnic minorities in London. A trend that's fueled by media images dominated by alluring, light-skinned black women. In an effort to obtain beautiful, blemish-free, clearer, brighter skin, many people are ignoring the health warnings associated with using such products. Antoinette regularly uses skin lightening products to improve her complexion. Um, I was told by my cousin to buy a certain bleaching cream, it's called the lemon cream. When I get up in the morning, I have a wash, then I apply it to my face, and sometimes other areas as well. Just to make my face look a bit more attractive than it already is. In her article, Regina Jeremalanda expresses her concerns about the damaging effects of skin lightening creams inflicted on black women. I think when I did that article, it was actually something that came out of some very personal um, uh, encounter. Well, we, um, uh, based on a very close kind of family friend who had come to visit me um, from back home. Mm. And I couldn't recognize my own friend, you see, because when I left, um, I think two or three years earlier, she was a different girl, but when she came to visit, she had actually, she looked really light. And I asked her what was going on. I just said, I don't agree with this. Sherry Dixon, health and beauty editor of Pride magazine, believes the media has played a role in influencing the concept of black beauty. In the long term, before, not recently, but for, for years, and especially in the 70s, 80s, I think the media always picked on the, the woman who was light skin, um, long hair, to, per to perceive so that the perception of black beauty, beautiful Vanessa, uh, Vanessa Williams, for example, um, you know, people like that, that, that they used as the, the right looking person if you want to be black. Um, and I think that a lot of black people then perhaps felt that, you know, in order to, to, to be accepted within the, the, the beautiful world is to, to, to bleach your skin. Um, and I think that that started it off. But then times changed and they put people like Alec Weck on covers. I mean, you never saw a black woman on a cover of a magazine. I think Naomi would have been the darkest woman that you've ever seen on on a lot of the covers, invariably they're always light skinned beauty. So I can understand why maybe at the time darker women felt that you know they, they were being left behind. I look at uh, Alec uh, Wake, you know, the Sudanese model, and I just adore her. I think she's gorgeous, she's smooth, she's got a skin tone that I would die for. And she's dark, and she's in vogue, and she's on the, you know, all this catwalk. So why, why, why how come she's accepted as beautiful model and uh, you know she's become this famous person so I wouldn't say that uh, it's just I think in the head really that it's not in vogue but not in the appearance I think black is in vogue it's been in vogue all the time really but mentally up there probably it's not in vogue I was told by my cousin to get the big tub of the cream because it usually lasts longer, which will be how much? Eight pounds, yeah. I've, because I do it partly by face by face, but I used, when I first got the cream, I used it on this side, and I did have a couple marks there, and I did use it, and, it's, and I'm going to use it on this side as well, and hopefully it will, there will be a result afterwards. Skin bleaching is not something that is new back home, I would say, it is something that has been there for a long, long, long time. I felt that darker skinned people tend, they're the ones who tend to put lighter skinned people on a pedestal. And I think until that stops, because I don't think light skinned people walk around saying, I'm light skinned and I'm better than you. I really don't think so. When we're talking about uh, our background or history, past history, why Sometimes we find ourselves in uh, these circumstances. A good example comes from the South African situation during the apartheid regime. You find that the colored people, the mixed race people, some of them actually bleach their skin to make them even look 
closer to the white. They're already lighter than uh, yeah. the, the, the um, South Africans. If you look at South Africans, South Africans are not dark people. They're not really dark. South Africans, compare South African to somebody from Uganda, for example. They're much, much lighter people. Why do they want to become much lighter? Um, this is the fade cream. Um, fade cream. I do like it. It's introduced to me by my friend of the family. It does smell nice. And I... What do I do? I take a little bit of it, because you're not meant to put too much on. Because you probably leave your skin yellowy and your hands. You put that just on the marks. I usually put it around my cheek area and my forehead as well because I get quite a lot of spots. But I don't use too much of it because when it does finish you have to go find another, another tub which is expensive. So I just use like, a little bit of it on the areas where the spots are but not too much and then you just, you just see the outcome of it. Which I, don't, I think it will take um, I waited two weeks from using it. I use it in the morning when I get up, have a wash, my skin's dry, and just apply it and just keep doing that for like about two weeks. Then I think it should be fine. The Asian um, market is also quite high in high users of, of skin lightening creams, and also Oriental people use it as well. And it's not just um, Asian people, you know, can't that sell products, sell the products. Marks and Spencer sell it. Uh, it's obviously not called Skin Lightning Cream. Shulmara, the company, does it. Um, Matisse does it. And they're called Skin Brightening Creams. So it's not just an African thing. Even Asians now are going into skin bleaching. Had an Asian girl uh, uh, on it, uh, on the front, uh, I mean on the packaging, an Asian girl, uh, before and after, they actually had uh, split her face like that before after asian people i think use it because i was told in their race um the lighter skin the person is the more that the woman is it's more easily to, for her to get married it's, it's a, a whole caste thing and the darker ones stay behind because um my skin is of a light color and i get blemishes in my face i think it does matter to me to, it does matter to me to go out and buy a tub of fade cream and have to use it, apply it um, weekly for two weeks. I went to southwest London to get some opinions about skin lightening from the ethnic community. It's quite difficult to get people to talk to us about skin toning and skin bleaching, so we have to keep on trying. Yeah, this bleaching, yeah, it's just brainwash. So they brainwash, they brainwash the kids. If you carry 500 white doll in the school and 500 black doll, the kids, all the kids will go for the white doll. Oh, smooth and clear. That's it. And why do you use them? Because I like it, you know, I like the effect again, I like the complexion again. Is they brainwash the kids from school, so they all get, get there from young, wish that they were white, that they had straight hair. This, this, this bleaching thing is sickening. Uh, people who are bleaching their skin, if I go into my heart, I would have to look deep and think, well, if they've got skin problems, I would not object to it. Very, very sad to see how you have your friends, they were very dark, Afro-Caribbean people, and all of a sudden they're all light-skinned. Our undercover researcher was sent to cosmetic shops in different parts of London to see just how accessible skin lightening products are. The range of skin lightening products is vast and cheap to buy. Black, black, black. When I look in the mirror, I say black. When I look in my heart, I still say black. Even when I touch my soul, I see black. <laughs>